Hiya! I've been asked to make a little video about sourdough bread. Uh, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I first tasted it last summer in San Francisco and it was really delicious. And then when lockdown started and I couldn't get bread, I thought, right, I'll make some bread. But then I couldn't get yeast and I remembered sourdough didn't need yeast. Um, so I thought I'll try making some. So the reason it doesn't need yeast is because you, um, instead of adding commercial yeast to your bread, you get your own yeast, your wild yeast, which is floating about in your kitchen. And so it's a naturally occurring yeast which goes into the bread and that makes it last and keep longer and it makes it more delicious. There's no artificial flavourings. So the first thing to do when you're making, just kick the cat, the first thing to do when you're making um, sourdough is you need to make a starter which or a leaven or levain if you want to be French and all that is is flour and water so um, I'm going to start by doing that now it takes a, a week before you can actually use this to bake bread um, so I've got one I made earlier in true blue peter tradition but all that this is is 100 grams of flour. Now this is strong white flour. Um, ideally you'd use half strong white and half wholemeal because wholemeal flour has more nutrients for the yeast to feed on. But I don't have any wholemeal so this is purely going to be strong white. So there's my 100 grams of flour. And then to that I'm going to add 100 mils of water. Almost. There we go. Give it a wee stir. And then I'll put that to one side and hopefully, maybe by tomorrow, um, there might be some bubbles. Um, the first starter that I need took four days before I saw any bubbles because my kitchen was pretty cold in March and so I had to actually sit it on a, a warm greenhouse tray um, to get anything. If you if you suffered from that you could put it in the, the oven with, with just the light on, the oven's not on but with the light on that'll be warm or put it in a box with a hot water bottle. You know, there's all sorts of things that you can do. So that's it. That's the beginnings of my starter. And that's just gonna I'm gonna cover it with cling film and then we'll check on that later. So here's one I made earlier. This is uh, called this it's good to name your starter because then if you make four or five you can identify them. And um, so this is circumceptum, uh, so named because loosely translated, that's Latin for around the place or around the precinct. So since it was the start of lockdown and I was stuck around my place, I thought I'll call it the Circumceptum. So, Cirque for short. Now, Cirque has been in the fridge for a week, because I tend to bake just once a week, and you can keep it in the fridge uh, if you don't want to use it, don't want to bake every day. You don't have to. If you're baking a lot, you can just keep it out. So, I keep them in the fridge. I took them out yesterday, and I gave them a feed. You have to feed them. It's like having a pet, a Tamagotchi, something like that. You have to feed them. Uh, so I gave him a little feed yesterday, he was quite hungry and I'm going to feed him again today and then tonight I'm going to start making the loaf. So this is preparation for later on. So the first thing to do is I'll pour out 200 grams of this starter and There we go. Put that to one side. Now, they say discard it. I don't like to discard it, so I tend to fry it up in a frying pan for the birds. Or you could um, put salt and pepper in it and some scallions and, you know, make a really nice um, meal. So, mm, nice and tangy. So now I'm going to add 100 grams of flour and 100 grams of water. Always equal amounts. 
and that gives you 100% hydration, which is what you want. So you want equal amounts of flour and water. So put in 100 of flour. Oop, that's a bit too much. Never mind. 127 of flour, so I'll put in 127 of water to keep them equal. It just means I'll have a bit more starter, but that doesn't matter. There we go. Perfect. I obviously knew I was going to make a mistake. And then I'll give that a good stir. And it's, it kind of thickens up. Yeah, so it's, gone, it's gone quite thick and lumpy, but the lumps will disappear. They just seem to magically disappear. Now that will really make Cirque very happy and tonight I'll make a sponge so what a sponge is is where you mix some starter with more flour and water and then you let it sit all night and that allows the gluten to develop in the flour and it starts to ferment and it just makes a nice bubbly base for the the sourdough bread so we'll have a look at that later and I'll get back to you tonight. Hiya, here we are again. It's evening now and uh, we're going to make the sponge. Now, <clears throat> if you look on the internet, there are hundreds of sourdough recipes. Some use a sponge, some don't use a sponge. Some mix flour and water together and leave it for half an hour to autolyze. <clears throat> I don't do that. I follow Hugh Fernley Whittingstall's recipe. Um, and I've tried four or five different recipes, some from the UK, some from the States. And I always go back to Hugh's because his works and a lot of the others just don't work at all. Um, but obviously it's your choice, but this is, this is his recipe and this is what I do. I don't follow it completely at the end. I don't, you know, I, I need the dough the way he needs it. I don't um, use a banneton, which is a basket which you're supposed to use. Um, I don't have one of those. Um, and I did start off making it in a bowl, um, but I don't even do that now. But you'll, you'll find out about that tomorrow, because when I actually get to making a loaf. So the sponge, you make a sponge tonight, so that's just starter and flour, plain and strong white flour, and water. That's it. Mix it together, leave it overnight, and then in the morning it'll be all bubbly and fermenty, and then that's when we get to do the fun bit of making the loaf. So I need to weigh out 150 grams of starter. Oh, and you can see by the way that Cirque really enjoyed his feet because that's where he started off when I fed him earlier on. Um, that's the level he was at and he's risen away up to here. In fact it's gone higher than that. You can see where the bubbles are and he's started to sink down a little bit. So this is he's at the perfect stage for actually baking with. Um, so we'll just give them a wee stir and pour out 150 grams. Oh, he's lovely. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. See on my scales. Uh, I always end up pouring too much in. Look at that. It's beautiful and it smells gorgeous too. There's no, um, not much, well, a couple of bubbles on the new starter that I started earlier on. Um, there we go, that's about 150. Uh, but nothing, nothing much so far. But um, this one, Cirque took four days before I got any bubbles at all. So it is warmer now, though, than it was then. And so that's 150 grams of starter, uh, 250 grams of flour. There we go. And 275 grams of water. And I should have said that when you're making a starter, uh, when you mix the flour and water together, you use warm water. This is just cold water. You don't need to, you know, once it's going and busy, and you can just use cold water. But for the, when you're initially making the starter, you should use warm water. Look warm, not hot. So just stir all this together. It's looking all 
Oh, lovely. Bit lumpy, but the lumps just magically disappear. And so we'll just make sure all the flour is incorporated. Like that. Gorgeous. And put the lid on. You can put cling film on it, you can put a tea towel on it, whatever you want. And that's it. Till tomorrow. Bye bye. Morning. It's day two of uh, baking sourdough bread, the Sheila way. Um, so here's the starter that I started yesterday. And you can see there's a bit of activity there, which was an improvement on the one I made in March, which took three or four days to get going. So um, I found some white spelt in the cupboard, which I didn't know I had. So I'm going to feed it today, get a little boost. So I'll give it 100 grams of white spelt. Well, there we go. And another 100 mils of lukewarm water. Put that in. Give it a wee stir. Lovely. And it actually smells really nice at the moment. There's no sour smell at all. Apparently, it can smell really horrible. But Cirque never smelled bad. Always smelled fruity and yeasty and fermenty and lovely. So that's that. And we'll leave that again till tomorrow. That's that. So, on to the loaf. So the sponge has been sitting all night. And look at it. Lovely and bubbly and luscious. It smells nice too. So I used white, strong white. I usually feed my starter with strong white and I usually make the sponge with strong white. Uh, and then in the loaf I use different flour. So I'm going to use some of this spelt flour, which I found. So it's 300 grams of flour in total. So I've got 150 of spelt, but you can use any flour. You can even use plain white flour. And I've got 150 grams of um, pea malts and sunflower seed. Again, you can use wholemeal, you can use rye, you can use anything you want. So that's 150 of each of those. Um, this is where I differ from Hugh. Um, Hugh Fernley Food and Soul's recipe says 10 grams of salt. I find that a little bit much, so I put in 7 to 8 grams. I just find 10 grams is a bit too salty for my taste, but everyone's different. So, pop in the salt. And the last ingredient is a tablespoon of olive oil. There we go. And I'm going to get my trusty bread scraper. This is my trusty bread scraper, which is actually um, for filler, plaster. You know, you get them free when you buy ready mixed plaster, so I tend to use that. I'll just get in there with a spoon to begin with. Give it a nice stir. see how gorgeous that is. It's all gloopy and yummy. So I'll just stir that a wee bit. And another way um, that Hugh tends to differ from a lot of sourdough recipes, especially American ones, they don't knead the dough. They stretch and fold it. Hugh's recipe calls for 10 minutes of straightforward kneading. Um, American recipes, they do what they call a stretch and fold, which I've, I've done, um, where you you pull up the dough and you fold over. Of course, that's not in a state to do that yet. And you do that four times, you go away, you come back in half an hour, you do it again. You go away, you come back in half an hour, you do it again. You go away, and this goes on for hours. I can't, you know, I can't be tied 
to my kitchen that way. So I don't bother doing that anymore. I just do what Hugh recommends, which is 10 minutes of kneading. To get the butter a nice consistency. And you don't want it to be too dry and it will be a wet dough um, and the wetter it is the lighter it will be and the area um, if you put a lot of flour in which you're tempted to do because it does feel terribly wet at first um, it will make it more dense but if it's really really sticky and different flours give you different results so a different flour might absorb more water or less water so if you feel you need to add some flour to it then go ahead. So that's it kind of mixed in. Let's scoop it, just scoop it all up together like that and then just push like that, fold over, push, fold over, push, fold over. And then I do the other arm so that each finger wing gets an equal workout. Three, and I just do five on each side. Don't want to end up with one huge arm and one skinny arm. And it's already feeling less sticky and more elastic. So I'll do that for 10 minutes, stopping every so often to scrape the dough off my hands, which have been thoroughly washed and lovely and clean. So put that off, there we go. Put that into a nice it is still sticky, but it'll be less sticky as we go on. And if I feel I have to, I'll put a wee bit of flour in, but I, I can tell already that I'm not going to have to. Because we're only one minute in and it's already feeling better. There are all sorts of tests that you can do to check if your dough's ready. There's what they call the window pane test, um, where you hold up the dough and kind of stretch it out so you can sort of see a, a window pane almost. It's translucent but still in one piece. I don't bother with that, but if you want to do it, you can do it. So. You don't want to watch me doing this for 10 minutes. So I'll just stop for now. I'm going to get Jill all over my iPad and I'll see you later. Okay, so I've needed this for actually 15 minutes. But I felt it wasn't quite elastic enough after 10. You can see how it's much less sticky now and it's much more stretchy and lovely. So I've also washed my bowl. I like to use a glass bowl so that I can see it rise but you don't have to, you can use any kind of bowl and I've also put a little bit of olive oil in it and I'm just going to pop the dough in there and the bits and then I'm going to turn it around so it's got olive oil on the outside of it. There we go. Piece of cling film over the top. And wood. And that's us. So I'm going to put that over. I don't really have a warm place in my house, so I'm going to just put it over on the table there where it'll get some of the sun coming in. And uh, that's that. Till later. It'll take about five or six hours. Don't expect a one or two hour rise. Hi again. Here I am again, and here's my beautifully risen dough. It looks amazing. That's why I like a glass bowl, because you can see what's happening with it. Um, now, normally at this stage, um, you would put it into a banneton, which is a basket. You get round ones or oval ones. I don't have a banneton. I quite often make an oval loaf just by shaping it in an oval shape and putting it on a baking tray to rise. Um, but for the sake of semi-authenticity, I'm going to put flour on a dish towel. It's a very old, vintage 1970s dish towel. Uh, and I'm going to flour it and put it in a bowl. 
and put lots of flour on it like this. When I first did it, I just put the dish gel in the bowl and floured it in the bowl, but all the flour just ended up there at the bottom and none was on the sides. So if you actually do that, then you get flour, much more flour on the, on the dish towel. You don't want your dough to stick when you're trying to turn it out onto a baking tray. Yeah, so that should do it, hopefully. Put it in there. Like that. So that's ready. Try and get the folds so that they're kind of flattish. There we go. That's ready for my dough. Get my scraper again. There we are. Plaster scraper. And oh, this is the fun bit. This is the bit I really like doing. Sticking it down like that. Right, now I'll take it out of the bowl, a wee bit of flour in the worktop, and there we go. I'm not going to knead it again, but I am going to shape it. So, and we want it to be round. If I was making an oval one, I would make it a rectangle then fold, fold, fold like a Swiss roll. But um, we want this to be round. We want it to be quite taut on the top so you kind of flour in the hand so it doesn't stick. And you sort of, it's hard to explain, you sort of push it over and under and over and under, over and under. And you keep doing that, sort of tucking it under all the way around until it's quite smooth and taut on the top, like that. And then, that's probably enough. It should squeeze under like that. And then you get your bowl and you put the smooth side down in the bowl. That's going to be the top. So, oh, I guess you use this to help me lift it up and down into the bowl. So that's got smooth side down. And then I'll, um, I'll just pop my cling film back on it. In fact, I might put a little bit of. That's all right, got some oil from the dough on it. Pop that in there, fold that over loosely, and then leave it for another one and a half to two hours. So, that rise that you just saw, that was, I started at 12, so that was six and a half hours to get to that stage. Um, six hours, it was about the same. So, see you later. Okay, folks, here we are, we're on to the tricky bit now. So here's the dough. It's, it's kind of risen up a bit. You probably can't see it because it's flaring a bit with the lights. There we are. Um, now I've got to get this out of this bowl and onto a hot baking tray the other way up. So always a bit tricky. You're supposed to do it while the tray's still in the oven, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take it out of the oven. And uh, it's probably easier if you do have a banneton for this because it's a bowl, which is quite low. Um, a bit of flour in the tray. Not quite sure how successful this is going to be. What I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to put the tray over this and then turn it up. That being careful because the tray is hot and hope for the best. Okay, that's a wee bit squinty. Put over a bit. There we go. And yeah, sometimes it sticks if you don't put enough flour on it. I'm gonna put it with a knife anyway, so doesn't matter too much. There we go. Oh, a 
away. No, a little bit more flour on it. I'm going to fill it across. Get that more centered. And then I'm going to score it. The traditional scoring is a square like that. But you can do whatever you want. And then it goes in the oven. And I put some boiling water in as well. That gives it a nice crust. There we go. That's just gone in a tray at the bottom of the oven. That's it. See you in half an hour. Okay. The moment of truth. that. It's quite pretty. Maybe not enough flour on it but uh, yeah I think it'll do. And that's my sourdough. Not, um, not artisan, not strictly speaking authentic but um, we like it and uh, I made it with basically no Dutch oven, no bannetons, you know, none of the paraphernalia that they say you must have. I didn't do the stretch and folding, I just did kneading and um, got a lovely loaf. Okay, good luck with your attempts. So I've decided to make uh, a loaf with the starter that we made at the beginning of this video because you can't make a starter and not make a loaf. This one I've called Elerante, which means going out, because we can go out now. Um, so um, I'll challenge you, your challenge is to work out what language that's in. So here's the dough, which is beautifully risen, which is a good sign, because starters get better with age. Um, so, you know, maybe we wouldn't have expected it to have risen quite so much. So we'll just get it out. I'm going to make a battered shape, which is my favourite shape. It's just a lot easier, I think, than messing about with flowered cloths and bowls and then trying to turn it out. So, flour in my hands. So I just tend to I make it into a Rectangle. Let's just move the camera up so you can see this a bit better. There we are. Make it into a rectangle like that, as much as I can, and then I just pull it and fold over, and pull and fold, and it's just a bit like rolling up a Swiss roll, but you're kind of pulling it and stretching it to get that taut effect on the outside. Poke the ends in as you go and then square it off at the bottom. Pull and fold and pull and fold. And then I just sit it on some grease proof paper and then I'll cover it with cling film again. And then when it's time to bake, I'll just slide this, slide the grease paper straight onto, um, I use a, a slate, that I've got a roofing slate, um, I just heat that up in the oven and I'll just, you could use a baking tray though, and I'll just slide that straight onto it and uh, off we go. Here's my loaf all nicely risen, and there's a hen behind me, I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to do what I did with the the round one, I'm just going to sprinkle it with flour, like that, and then one, two, three, and then I've got my hot slate here which is just out of the oven, I'm just going to sit that onto it, 
and then about 10 minutes before it's finished baking I'll take out the grease proof paper and that'll firm up the bottom so I don't have a soggy bottom. Okay. And here's my lovely loaf straight out of the oven, still hot. And I think for a brand new starter that was only made last week, um, that looks pretty good. Okay, it's cooled down a wee bit, so let's see what it looks like. Oh, lovely noise. And that's not bad for a first loaf made from a new starter. It's got quite a few nice holes, and that's what you... You, you're after in a sourdough when you when you make toast and you put butter on it and all the butter drips through the hole. Lovely. Smells really nice too. Pleased with that. Mm -hmm.